everybody, my name is Mayhem here, and today we're going to be looking at a Zima board. So a Zima board is a single board computer that uses x86 architecture. Meaning that we can take this single board computer and put pretty much any operating system we want onto it, including server software. One of the main reasons why I've got myself one of these Zima boards is that I want to actually be able to run something continuously using very, very low power draw that would allow me to actually keep some of my services and dashboards up and running in my lab. This is the lowest spec available that you can get from Zima board and it is the 232. The good news for me is that I don't need anything too high spec. I just need something that I can keep running with low power to make sure that whenever I go to my VPN or log onto my home systems, I can have a dashboard turn up to kind of navigate to all of my different systems. So let's get this over to the top down camera and let's have a look at what we've got in the box. Right, so here we go. So the first one we've got is a letter from Lauren, the founder of Icewell Tech. I'll just leave that on there and you can pause if you want to read it. But it's really nice to see that little touch on there. Underneath that, we have got ourselves some lovely Zima board stickers. I do need to set up a display at some point in my backdrop where I can put some of these stickers up eventually. And here's a bit what we're all actually looking forward to, our Zima board and our power supply. So I'll take the power supply and put it to one side for one second and we'll focus on the Zima board. So as I said, this is the single board server. It is the x86 architecture, so it can run Windows, Windows Server, it can run Linux, all sorts of different operating systems. As standard, it comes installed with a copy of Debian and on that Debian has got Casa OS, which is Zima board's own operating system that has got a web GUI involved and an app store. And that is one of the reasons that actually drew me to this particular board. There's the other side of the box. So hashtag single board servers. As I said, my version is the 232 version, which is the lowest spec. It has got a PCI Gen 2 X4. It can support up to 36 terabytes of storage using two SATA. It's got dual gigabit NICs and it's got 4K display output. This particular version is the Intel 2 core. And then here's the back of the box here as well. So once we're just talking about the different ports that we've got available here, which is our PCI Express, our SATA ports and SATA power, and our two Ethernet LAN gig ports. So let's open the box. I do really enjoy when companies put a lot of effort into their packaging, just because it makes it look so nice and feel so much more professional. Right, so so far we've done a box within a box within a box. Here is the next box. Hopefully this time we're gonna get the money shot. And here we go. Now we have got our user manual of the actual Zuma board itself, and we have got the Zuma board inside of an anti-static bag. Down the side here, we seem to have a little piece of card that is protecting our SATA power and SATA data cable for the extra drive. So here's the user manual. We've got the safety precautions, the packing list, it's got a quick start guide, the name of the parts, and a troubleshooting and specification guide. So these precautions there, what's inside the box? And then of course I quick start here. Here's all the different parts inside the board, a quick troubleshooting guide, and the specification there as well. So as I said, the model that I've got is the Zimmer board 323. It's running an Intel Celeron processor, a Polar Lake. It is the N350 two core, 1.1 gigahertz to 2.4 gigahertz with a two megabyte L2 cache. Graphics wise, it's running the Intel HD Graphics 500. Uh, it's got two gig of memory. It's got a 32 gigabyte onboard storage and it runs at six watts. That's the bit that's most important to me, that nice little six watt mark. As far as connectivity, it's got, it's got two SATA 3.0 at six gigabytes per second per port. And it has got two gigabyte LAN ports, two USB 3s, one PCIe Gen 2 X4, one with a display port that can support 4K at 60 Hertz, and then it's got a power jack on there as well. So let's move this away and actually look at the board. So here's our board in all its glory. This here is a giant piece of metal that acts as a heatsink. Here's our PCI Express card lane. These are our dual Ethernet, our USB freeze, our display port, and our power jack. And then on the other side of the board, you see that we've got our two SATA, and we've also got our power. So that's the board itself. Here's a better look at the cable that comes with it. So as you can see, this is your normal SATA power and SATA data, and it splits out into a SATA 
data and a four pin power as well. On the store, you can get a wire adapter version of this, so you can have the two SATA ports going to two SATA cables and the one power going to both of the drives. So this is how I'm using my Zima board. Within the Zima board is a Debian OS, and on there is a web server called Casa OS. Casa OS web server is basically an app store that can run different Docker containers to be able to have different apps and kind of let you run how things how you want to run them. So what I've done here is I've customized my dashboard a little bit and put my own background on there. Uh, what I've also done is put some new apps on there and created some web links. So I'll just give you a quick tour of what I've got on here and then you'll understand kind of why I went for a low powered version of Zima board because it's all I need to do what I need it to do. So here we've got the App Store button. This will allow you to add new apps to the actual Zima board itself. You've got your file sharing here, which is ever so useful. I've got a terabyte hard drive in there that I just use to drag and drop files between different machines. I've got a link here that goes to my Proxmox. So I've actually been able to use the plus button here and add an external link, put the IP address of my Proxmox in, and then use a URL for the picture as well. So what's nice is I can actually click on this bit here and it will load my Proxmox server like so. Uh, I have the same thing for my Meshtastic node and my wireless AP that I have in my home lab. I have also got a link to my Pi Hole as well, which is inside of the house. I'm also running a couple of apps on here. I'm running MySpeed, which is doing speed tests of my internet every hour to make sure I'm getting what I pay for. I've got Uptime Kuma running, which is kind of monitoring all my different services that I have going on my network. I'm also hosting Trillium. So anyone who's familiar with Microsoft 365 OneNote, this is very, very similar to that. And I'm using it for my documentation and my ideas, for my YouTube videos. I've also got two apps on here that are from a different app store and they are WebMap and WebChecker. WebMap is a version of Nmap, but it's got a web-based GUI. And I've also got WebChecker, which allows you to kind of do a who is on different websites and see where websites are set up incorrectly and how you can kind of exploit them. What's quite nice is, is I have a VPN on my home network running through WireGuard. So I'm able to connect back with my phone, my desktop and my laptop. So no matter where I am in the world, I can connect back to this dashboard and connect back to these services. So as I was saying, there is a wonderful app store on here. So you can just click these buttons to install to be able to actually have different apps installed and all working for you straight away. It's a really good way to be able to just set things up nice and easy and test out little bits and bobs on your network. As I was saying, there is a way to actually add more apps. So if you come to this app section here and drop down on this little button here, we can click on to more, and this will give us a big list of all the different libraries that are currently out there on CASA to be able to actually have more apps. These aren't actually run by CASA, but they are available to use on CASA OS and managed by external parties. The one that I'm most interested in and we'll be doing a video on soon is the CASA OS pen testing Docker app store which gives you a load of pen test tools that you can actually host on a Zima board on your network. The way you add these particular app stores is you copy the link of the one that you want, you come back to Casa OS, click on that drop down box and click onto more apps. You then paste the URL into the box and click add and that will then add those apps to your store. As I was saying, I've gone for a very lightweight version of the Zima board. It just allows me to get services up and running and allows me to have a landing page to connect to all of my different apps and network services. There are plenty of other ways you can use the Zima board and a lot more heavy duty stuff you can do if you want to buy a more heavy duty version of the board. You can also add extra stuff onto it by using that PCI Express slot. But for the moment, this is how I'm gonna keep using it. As I've got different systems that can actually do the high compute that I need to, and this is just gonna be there as an interconnecting bridge for the rest of my network. Right, so that's everything from me. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and it's gonna give you a bit of in-depth knowledge of how I'm gonna be using the Zima board and what I'm gonna be using it for. Hopefully that gives you some ideas of how you can use one of these devices yourself to kind of build out your own home lab and your own sort of dashboard. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments section. Please feel free to like, follow and subscribe and see you next time. Happy hacking, cheers.